Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the curl command to download everything from files, post requests, get requests, and even interact with APIs out there on the internet. And there's gonna be a ton of examples, so if that's something you wanna learn how to do, let's go ahead and get on into the video here. Okay, first let's talk about installation. If you're on Windows, you will need to install curl. Uh, you can get it from curl.se slash download.html. Uh, pick one of these. Uh, zip archives or tars and install that on your system. Um, if you're on Mac, you can use brew. If you have the brew package manager installed, just do a Google for it, you can find it. Uh, brew install curl. And then if you're on Linux, it should be installed, but if not, you could do something like apt install uh, curl or whatever the equivalent is for, um, that was for Ubuntu, Debian, yum, install curl. Okay, so assuming that you have curl, let's go through some examples about how to use the command. So I have it installed here on my MacBook and I'm in the, uh, uh, I'm nav I navigated to the desktop and then on the desktop there's a directory called temp, which I have open back here. So we should be able to see stuff uh, show up in there if we actually download a file throughout this tutorial. So anyway, let's go ahead and start with a super basic example. Let's get, uh, let's curl a website. So curl https colon slash slash Tony teaches dot tech. And what this is gonna do is return the content of the HTML for that page. Now that doesn't seem too helpful. Um, maybe sometimes it is, but uh, that's the simplest, most basic way to do it. It outputs that content to the standard output on the screen here. Okay, another thing, if you just wanted to look at the header for that HTTP request, you could do curl-i, and then same thing, https colon slash slash tonyteaches.tech. And this time we're just gonna see the header information. So there's some good information in here, um, like the fact that we are using cache. The, the server that this website is running on is a Lightspeed server. Um, you can tell that I'm using WPX hosting for my website, uh, stuff like that. So um, from that perspective, it's a pretty valuable thing to look at a header for a website. Now let's try a different website. Let's do curlgoogle.com. That's interesting. So it says the document has moved. Okay, so and it's linking us to HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. So, what we learned here is that curl does not follow redirects by default. So, you know, if we try to even go to something like curl HTTPS colon slash slash google.com, we'll get that same thing because it's looking for this fully, uh, I don't know if that's the right word, fully qualified domain name with HTTPS and the www on it. So finally, if we go to curl HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.com, now we get the actual content of the Google page, which again, it's not that helpful, but just going through the process here. So um, if you do want curl to follow uh, um, links, uh, redirects, I should say, if you want curl to follow a redirect, you can do curl-l, and then we can use our uh, example, uh, google.com, hit enter, and that will, again, follow that uh, redirect to the actual content. Whereas if you remember without the L, for redirect, um, we got the page has not been found or the page has been moved. Okay, so that's cool and all, but let's, instead of spitting out all this HTML to the terminal window, let's send it to a file. And we can do that with curl-o, and you can call the file whatever you want, o for output. I'm gonna call mine index.html, and then we will do Tony Teaches Tech. Now we'll do google.com, https colon slash slash www.google.com. So now this time is pay attention up here to the temp folder. We should see that file, uh, if I spell curl right, um, pop up in our temp folder. So hit enter, there we go. So we have our index.html file here. Let's open that, serve it from our local file system. And you'll see that it gets the structure of the website, but it doesn't get any of the assets associated with it. So the image is missing because that's a separate request and some of the formatting like the CSS is gone too. But we do have the basic structure. If you look at the page source, uh, we do have the content of the website, uh, the web page itself. Okay, so that's, that's good to know. Um, let's minimize this. 
actually, let's keep this open uh, because I want to reference this API. I promise we talk about API. So API application programming interface Coinbase, uh, the the um, cryptocurrency uh, exchange has a an API that we can tap into. So what I want to do is find out the price of Bitcoin in US dollars from the API using curl. So we can do that. If you go down here to prices, uh, the, the get request looks something like this. We can, um, and it gives you an example, curl, HTTPS, API, coinbase.com, version two prices, Bitcoin, USD, buy. So let's copy that. Let's go to our terminal window and execute that. So let's see what the price of Bitcoin is right now. And right now it's at $37,062. Um, we can do, that was for the buy price, right? We can see what the sell price is and we can also see what the spot price is too. So we just to make one tweak instead of buy, make it sell. So the, the price is a little bit different for the sell price and then the spot price, uh, again, a little bit different. And I, I guarantee you now, if we look at the buy price again, it has changed from 37,062.34 to something else because this is an API and it has it, it increased by hundred dollars um, just in a matter of minute maybe. Um, so that's kind of a very basic instruction to how to interact with an API via a get request. Um, now let's say there's, there's another uh, API that I wanna show you, which you can explicitly show your get requests in the URL. And that is this publicly available API called genderize, okay? Um, so what this does, this API does is predicts whether or not a name that you give it is a boy or girl. So um, if you make the request via curl to that URL, genderize.io, do a question mark, and here's our get request with our name value pair. Name equals Tony. Let's see if this is a boy or a girl's name. Uh, it says name, male, probability, 98%. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Uh, let's try something else. And I, I just want to prove to you, because I know it sounds like a lot of hand-waving when I say get requests and post requests. If you want to be explicit about that, we can say uh, dash capital X to explicitly say it's a get request. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll get back the same exact uh, response. But um, let's try it with uh, Sally. Is this a boy's or a girl's name? Uh, and it's female and that's 95% confident that it is a female's name. So in general, uh, let me just put this here. Uh, if you have a uh, post request that you wanna send some data with, uh, you use the dash D flag, okay? So um, instead of tacking your options and your value pairs onto the end of the URL, you pass it in via a parameter to curl. Okay, so I don't have an exact example uh, to show you with an API that we can tap into, but that's how that would look for a post request. The closest thing I can do when interacting, uh, using curl to interact with a post request is my diamond price tracking website. Okay, so let's go to the diamondapp.com. And on the home page here, uh, that this table being populated was a post request. And I'm gonna to try to make this as uh, clear as possible, but if we open up Chrome Dev Tools and go into the network tab, which I'm already in, and click on the XHR tab within that, which is stands for HTML or XHTML uh, HTTP request, um, and we refresh the page, we will see the post request happening. And this is the post request right here, okay? And uh, the data that we're supplying you know, with that dash D, if you were using curl, is all of this stuff right here. So that's allowing us, basically what you're looking at is um, the selections of uh, what is on here on the filters on the left-hand side um, and what's being presented uh, in the table over here. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because this is built in curl. You can you can right-click on the, the request, uh, copy, copy as a curl command, okay? So they say C URL, uh, copy as a curl command. So we can copy that and emulate this on the command line. So let's get some spaces because this is gonna be a big command, but uh, 
and it'll be overwhelming, but we'll try to walk you through it. So, um, oops, it looks like we got cut off here for some reason. Let's try that again. Bear with me for a second. I lost my terminal window. There we go. Okay. Uh, so let's copy the curl command again. Copy, copy as a curl request, a curl command. Um, and then I will paste that in. Hopefully we don't get cut off. I don't know why it's cutting us off. Uh, let's see if it works though. It does work. Okay, so there. this is the response as JSON. So I bear, let's see what the last item in here is. Uh, do, do, do. Let's see if we can find the price for this last item. Um, carrot shape color. Let's pray. Okay, $2,038. So I bet you if I scroll down on the page, we'll see that the price of this diamond at the bottom is $2,038, and it is. And it has a, a down arrow, uh, which you can see right there. So that's the response of the request. Let me see if I can use the up arrow key to see. Nope, it's cutting it off. I'll open up a text window here and paste that in. Okay, so here's the curl command. Sorry that it took so long, but uh, we're, do we're doing a curl command to this URL. We're passing in a bunch of headers. Okay, this is all happening when the user clicks, visits the page. And then instead of the dash D flag, this is using the explicit dash dash data uh, dash raw. And here's all your key value pairs. So draw equals this value. And then if you look through, that's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, we want prices between $100 and $10 million. And we want it to sort by the caret and sort in the direction ascending. So it's a lot to parse through, uh, but that's a more complicated example of using the curl command uh, in a real world situation for a website, how you can kind of maybe debug things. Um, and this one specifically for a... Uh, post request. So uh, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to um, talk to you guys about today. There's a lot more you can do with the curl command, but hopefully this introduction is helpful for you. Um, if you're interested in things like this, I also have a video on the wget command, which you can watch next right here. Uh, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.